No, excited, excited to play another great SEC opponent, another great SEC weekend, uh, last regular season weekend of the year. So uh, need to finish strong, playing a great opponent. So uh, as always, we need to play our best baseball. First of all, happy birthday. Um, I guess moving forward, you have three SEC games left. How comfortable are you with where you guys stand in, in the, for the postseason and in the SEC standings? Well, I don't think comfort, uh, comfort is ever a word you use as the coach in the SEC. It's, it's just where are you and what do we need to do to improve our standing? Uh, obviously, at this point in the season, uh, being in the top five in this league is, I, I think, is a pretty good standing for, for where our club is and where our program is. So. Um, that being said, uh, we're just going into this weekend trying to win the next game, as we always do. So I think we're, we're on pretty solid footing right now, but we don't take anything for granted. And, and our job is to go out and play great baseball uh, in our next game. Mark, there's been so much talk about the offense you know, over the last four SEC series. But I think you guys lead the, the SEC, tied for the lead in fielding percentage right now. Just how important has that been? And what's sort of been the turnaround uh, for the defense over the last month? Well, pitching and defense, you have to uh, – pitching and defense is what has to be uh, the, the starting point for any good baseball team, any good baseball program. You have to be able to pitch and play defense. Uh, as you mentioned, we're, we're at the top in the SEC right now, and we're fifth nationally, uh, fielding 982. So our defense has worked really hard. We have veteran guys out there. I think LT Tolbert at shortstop has really solidified uh, – our infield, Justin Rowe, has played really well. Jo Jonah Bride's regarded as one of the top third basemen around. Matt Williams um, has played tremendous at first base. Um, Hunter Taylor has, has, I mean, it's just on and on and on. Uh, our guys and our outfield has played really well. So I just think it's a, it's a, it's a talented defensive team. We work really hard at our defense, both in, in just getting the proper reps, but also making sure mentally they're locked in and they know what to expect and they're thinking ahead of pitches and ahead of plays. So uh, defense has been a big part of what we've done. There's no question about it as, as far as just the importance of this series I know you probably like you said before it's not necessarily something you ever feel comfortable with but you know do you kind of alter your decision making going into this week knowing what's ahead with the tournament and also you know how will TJ Hopkins availability play into that part yeah, TJ will uh, make the flight with us this weekend. So uh, I don't know what that means in terms of him being able to start yet. Um, but he is, uh, we are planning on having him available in some capacity. Um, how big that becomes, we don't know yet. Um, in terms of, what was, I'm sorry, Will, what was the first part of that question? Just, just uh, you play things a little bit more conservatively with your pitching staff, knowing with the tournament coming up. Yeah, now at this point, we'll just, we'll, we're going to be status quo and we'll evaluate as we go. Um, Obviously, if things go your way throughout the weekend, maybe maybe you look at some things to adjust. If they don't go your way, you might have to look at some things to adjust. Um, but until we see something that makes sense for us to tweak, then we'll just go into it with, uh, with you know, thinking we'll, we'll be status quo. What stands out to you about Texas A&M? And with them sitting at 12 and 15 in the league, do you expect an even greater sense of urgency from them, even though they have a good RPI, to be able to be sure they get into that NCAA tournament? Yeah, I think everybody at this point in the season has has a sense of urgency. I think everybody wants to finish strong. The first thing that steps out uh, about Texas A&M, as always, is they can really pitch. They have a 3-3 as a team. That's, that's impressive. Uh, to have an ERA that low at this point in the season is extremely impressive. So, uh, in Texas, Texas as a state is known for having great arms, great power arms. I recruited that state for a long time when I was at Tulane University, so I'm well aware of the arms that you can get in that program, the only SEC program in that state. So um, to me, that's the first thing that stands out, but they also hit over 280 as a team. They're fielding 972 as a team. It's a very balanced lineup. Um, it's just a team that you have to play really well. Um, I think their record in the SEC is just indicative of how great the league is this year because they have 35 wins overall. So so to me, that their RPI is within uh, striking distance of hosting. So my guess is they're going to give everything they have this weekend to play their best baseball to try to finish strong just like we are. LT had that wrist injury after, I guess, during Sunday's game. Just how's he doing? And are there any other injuries on the team? He's fine. He'll be he'll be totally fine, and um, no more new injuries. Ridge is nursing an injury right now, so uh, he will not make the trip with us this weekend. Um, Past that, uh, nothing else that, that would be considered new. Do you think your team has a resume that is in hosting consideration at this point? Sure.
I mean, I'm never going to say no to that. Uh, uh, we're always going to be optimistic. Uh, realistically, have we done enough yet to say we should be one of the top 16 teams considered? No, we have not. We've had some slip ups over the course of the year. Um, but if we finish strong, if we go on a great run in the tournament, who's to say we can't get to that position? So we're going to we're going to always try to you know shoot for the stars and make sure we're as, as, as in a good position as we can be for that selection committee. Um, if they choose to let us host, we'll do that. If they choose to maybe um, put you on the back burner, but if you win your regional on the road and potentially you can be a super regional host, who knows? Um, at the end of the day, that stuff is out of our hands, and so to talk too much about it or think too much about that would be counterproductive. So we're just going to try to figure out how to play great baseball on Thursday. A two-part question. Number one, would you have liked to play that game last night and get that in before this conference series, or are you okay with having a week off before heading, or I guess it would be five days before heading to Texas A&M? And then the second part, a lot of these stats keep getting thrown around. You know, first time Carolina's won four straight SEC series since 2012, the last time Carolina went to the College World Series. Is it uh, obviously winning consistently is important, but especially on in the back half of the season, is that even more important? Well, first question, I love watching our team play, so I'm always disappointed when we don't get to play um, because I think we are a very fun team to watch play, um, both for fans and for coaches. Uh, number two, I think it's important to play your best baseball at the end um, of a season. There's no question about it. A lot of teams get off to great starts and then fade. I think we've done the opposite. We, we struggled. We uh, took some time to find ourselves, to get healthy, to hit our stride to figure out the best way to put the pieces together for this team but I think we've done that and so I think the fact that we've played so well the second half of the season uh, speaks very positively about our program and where we are and so we just need to continue to build on it back to kind of talking about the tournament but what what part do you play with Ray being on the tournament committee and, and kind of having that even though he has to recuse himself when your team is brought up and, and would you want to enter a scenario where you could be a host, but not necessarily the top seed in a particular regional if that scenario materialize yeah well i'll never turn down the chance to play at founders park that's for sure they can put us as the fourth seed if we're hosting and we get to play here in this stadium i'll, I'll sign that deal um you know how how it uh relates to ray obviously coach tanner is is very professional and he's not going to do anything that's not of the utmost integrity uh for the process. So uh, I, I think that will have very little to do with, with where we're put or how, where we're placed or do we host or do we not host. Um, we'll get what we deserve, um, bottom line. Do you like RPI as, as part of this whole selection process where it's, it's kind of a system that's so based on, on who you play, whereas you know, if, if last night's game gets played, that might hurt you. And, and just the fact that you're facing a team where Texas A&M is, that will help almost kind of regardless of outcome? I think it's too basic a metric uh, to decide who the best teams in the country are. I, I think I think these days there's a lot more that could be put into it. I, I think scoring margins could be put into it. I think trends could be put into it. I think you could take out the bottom and the top games. I, I think there's a lot more ways with, with uh, with as much technology as available to everybody these days and with as, as deep as statisticians can go into evaluating players and teams, I think it's just too basic a metric these days to measure what teams are and, and who the best teams are, in my personal opinion. Any, uh, any more questions? No. Wow, that was easy. All right. Anybody?